you like to live in the peace and quiet of nature without giving up the amenities the city can offer? What if I told you that it's actually possible, affordable, and easier than you think? Hello everyone, this is Mariana from Mexico Relocation Guide, and in today's video, I'll walk you through this calm, small town by Chapala's Lakeshore, Jocotepec, or Joco, as it's known by the locals. Jocotepec, along with Ajijic and Chapala, make up the Lake Chapala area, which is one of the most sought-after spots for expats moving to Mexico. So join me and let's take a deeper look into what Joco has to offer. Let's get started. Jocotepec is located on the west side of the lake. One of the biggest draws for foreign residents living in the Lake Chapala area is the near-perfect climate that this region offers. And because it is situated at over 5,000 feet above sea level and settled alongside Mexico's largest natural lake, the area offers all the benefits of living in a mountain climate without having any chilly winters. The year-round temperature in Jocotepec is ideal for indoor and outdoor activities all year long. Even in December, January, or February, you can go golfing, hiking, have lunch outdoors, and enjoy everything that the outdoors has to offer. The average annual temperature roughly is around 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, with May being the hottest month because of the lack of rain. And a minimum of about 60 to 50 degrees in January during the day, so it never gets too hot or too cold. And because it's in the mountains, you can find some of the most beautiful flora and fauna such as deer, wolf, fox, wild boars, porcupine, skunk, badger, reptiles, and all types of migratory birds. Jocotepec was founded in 1520, and today it has about 18,000 inhabitants. Now this is a small, traditional Mexican town, so we think it's a great area for people who are looking for a laid-back vibe, who are looking to find nice rentals that are all within their budget, as well as those who want to be close to the nearby town of Ajijic without actually living in Ajijic. Now, to give you an idea of what rentals go for in Jocotepec, here are some examples. If you want to find the best deals on rentals, you have to look where the locals look. Now, you have to understand that also comes with its own risk because you're not really sure if the person you're renting from is actually the owner of the house. You could potentially fall victim to common scams and rentals. To avoid this, make sure you don't make any deposits without seeing the rental first. And make sure you ask for a utility bill to see if the name coincides with the person who's renting you this place. If it doesn't, ask to speak with the owner directly to ensure that this person has permission to rent you this place. Now, if this is your first time ever renting a place in Mexico, we do recommend working with a reputable and trustworthy realtor who can be your facilitator in translating the lease, checking to see the rental terms and that they are reasonable, do some of the negotiating on your behalf for pet deposits and things like that, and because Lake Chapala and its locals are used to the influx of foreigners moving here looking for a better life, you can rest assured that the rental process will be much easier than in other cities in Mexico. In Jocotepec and in the Lake Chapala area, you probably will not need a naval or a poliza de arrendamiento. It is, however, common to be asked to pay for the first month's rent and the last month's rent up front, or the first month's rent and a deposit. So you see, living in Jocotepec will not only be affordable, but also beautiful and comfortable year round. Now we know several people living in Jocotepec under a thousand US dollars a month. That's not to say it's not possible for you, but based on US or Canadian standards, we think this may be on the lower end of the budget. Your lifestyle will dictate how much you actually spend per month. 
The biggest thing you have to consider though is that even though you can live in Mexico on a very low budget, you have to consider that the residency requirements are not exactly the same as the cost of living. To learn what the income requirements for Mexican residency are, we have a link down below in the description of this video explaining the best way to know if you qualify for residency in Mexico. Check it out in the description of the video. One of the biggest reasons we think you should consider Jocotepec is that unlike some of the neighboring areas like Ajijic and its neighborhoods, rentals here can easily be found for a fraction of the cost. Jocotepec has the fewest foreigners living here among all the Lake Chapala area, but that doesn't mean it isn't a great option for you if you're looking into cities in Mexico where not only would you live comfortably, but it would be easy for you to make friends. After all, the retiree famous town of Ajijic is only a 15 minute drive. Now what you also get in Jocotepec is the authentically Mexican pueblo that you may be looking for. And because Joco has its own malecon overlooking the lake, you won't have any problems getting the gorgeous views of Lake Chapala. Plus, you have the awesome Guadalajara International Airport within 45 minutes where you can easily get flights to many international destinations within the United States, Canada, Europe, and beyond. Okay, now let's get into one of the most important things to consider when moving out of your country, and that's healthcare. Luckily, when living in Joco, you will have a variety of options nearby. Starting with the government subsidized medical system, which is also known as IMSS. You can get pretty good quality healthcare services here, although you should know that there are waiting periods to be fully covered. Now, in addition to IMSS, there are also numerous U.S. standard healthcare clinics in the Lake Chapala area. Some of these include Rivera's Hospital, Clinica San Antonio, Chapala Med, and other private practices, just to name a few. And only about 45 minutes away is Mexico's second largest city, Guadalajara which has some of the best hospitals in Mexico and in Latin America. So you can rest assured that you won't have a problem finding good medical coverage in this area of Mexico. Now, many foreigners living in Mexico who do not qualify for private medical insurance because of pre-existing conditions or because of their age, choose to pay out of pocket. And because healthcare in Mexico is so affordable, it won't break their bank. We do recommend always having a budget for medical emergencies, if this is your case, to give you peace of mind that you have the funds if you ever need to pay for things on your own. For many others, there is private health insurance, and there are no shortage of insurance brokers in the area who offer everything from very basic coverage to international coverage. Another expert tip for some people that aren't aware of this is that if you're from the US and are eligible for Medicare, you can sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan that covers life-threatening emergencies in Mexico. Because the claims process can be a bit complicated, we do have an excellent recommendation for a service that handles claims, pays a hospital for you, and assists you in the process to give you one less thing to stress about. And because not all Medicare Advantage plans are the same, it's also important that you work with a good broker who is knowledgeable about using Medicare Advantage in Mexico and can sign you up for the plan that will actually cover you. If you need those recommendations, they are included in our complete Mexico relocation guide. Now, if you're not from the US and don't qualify for private health insurance in Mexico, we also have a few resources for great medical coverage in Mexico without breaking the bank and will cover you even if you have pre-existing conditions or even if you're over 70. All of our resources, tips, and recommended contacts are part of what you get when you buy our complete Mexico relocation guide. Check out what's included, the link is in the comments. Now, for those looking for other additional services, there are plenty of dentists, optometrists, and even great plastic surgeons for minor or major treatments. How do you get around? Well, if this is your first time exploring the Lake Chapala area, you should know that there is one main road, or carretera, that connects all the towns. It can be traveled by bus, car, and even bike. This road has a bikeway of its own. Now, we encourage you to bike as much as possible when possible, or walk to help minimize the amount of traffic on this one road. But we understand that may not be possible for you, so driving will be your best bet or taking a cab. Just know this carretera is prone to traffic jams and it may be a good idea to avoid this main road on holidays and on weekends. 
Now, if you wanna to travel to Guadalajara without having to worry about driving or parking or any of that, there are some great buses from Joco to Chapala and from Chapala to Guadalajara. Both bus terminals in Joco are near the plaza. First and second class buses go the same direction, but first class makes limited stops while second class buses usually make a lot of stops. And even though there is a small difference in the cost, it's a far better experience to be able to ride with the least amount of stops possible. There are also taxis that can take you from one part of the town to the other and even drive you all the way to Guadalajara. Now, depending on the length of travel, you can expect to pay around 60 pesos or more to get from Joco to the neighboring towns. Now, if you have watched any of my previous videos, you know I'm a big promoter of shopping locally as much as possible. For starters, that is how you'll get some of the freshest produce, but it will also make the most direct impact on that local vendor's pocket. And Joco does have a mercado, or market, where you can find vegetables, fruits, and even some basic clothes and household goods. But if you need a bigger grocery trip, then there is always Bodega Herrera in Joco, Soriana in Chapala, or Walmart. Just know that Walmart has pretty negative reviews from people who live in the Lake Chapala area, so just know that better quality can be found in other stores. There are also small convenience stores known as tienditas or abarrotes. Here you can find the classic staples like bread, rice, beans, milk, soap, and even toiletries. They usually aren't very big and their selection may be limited, but it's very convenient since there's usually one in every neighborhood. Now, if you move to Joco, you may be wondering what you're gonna do with your extra time. Well, let's get into things to do. In every small town of Mexico, like Joco is, the main plaza is a gathering place for families, kids, and young lovers to spend their afternoons or evenings. Live music is usually played on the weekends, and there are a variety of street food vendors. These plazas usually come alive when the sun sets, which is when most families get off work. And because Mexico is a very family-driven culture, you will see generations of family together, hanging out and enjoying each other's company. And for those looking for churches, there are at least seven different parroquias or templos in Joco. The biggest and most notable one is Parroquia Señor del Monte. Now these are usually in Spanish, so learning some basics would be a good idea if you're looking to join mass. Another famous event in the area is Fiesta del Lago Chapala. This festival has operated Lakeside since the 2008s, and it sails from the Jocotepec Malecon. So if you live here, you can actually see them take off. There are also a variety of water sports that happen on the lake. You can either rent a boat or hire a tour to take you around the lake. And I think this is a great way to see the town surrounding Lake Chapala from a totally different perspective. Now, if you wanna go have lunch or dinner from time to time, Jocotepec has a variety of restaurants ranging from street tacos to regional specialties like birria, carne asada, or grilled specialties. And because Joco is very safe, you won't have a problem walking around at different times of the day or spending time alone. What do you think? Are you liking Jocotepec? Why or why not? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. We think it's a great small town that not only offers great weather, beautiful scenery, but also has a very comfortable cost of living without sacrificing quality of life. Now, we hope that you will come to Joco and see its charm for yourself. We recommend a private Mexico relocation tour with one of our recommended tour guides, who will drive you around, answer your questions about living in the local area, and will give you their insights about this beautiful town. The best part is that there's no agenda, so you can truly sit back, relax, and get all the information you need without having to go through a sales presentation. But we also recommend spending some time on your own to explore. So why not rent a small apartment for six months at a time while you scope out Jocotepec? Either way, we hope it makes your list of places to check out in the highlands of Mexico. I hope that my video has helped you get a better perspective of what Joco could be like and if it fits the lifestyle that you're looking for in Mexico. And hey, if you're still exploring more options or other cities, look no further. Subscribe to my channel and check all my other videos where I talk about other cities and towns as well as tips and overall information about Mexican culture and how to adapt to it. You can also visit our website, MexicoRelocationGuide.com, so you are always informed and up to date with all the information you need to know about moving to Mexico the right way. So thank you so much for watching. This is not goodbye. 
Justin, hasta luego.